Hello and welcome to the Avanti Entrepreneur Podcast. I am Dave Mamano, your host, and once a week I bring on rock star entrepreneurs that are affecting the world in a great way, making impact, doing things differently than everybody else, and bringing incredible value to the world. Today I'm going to show Robert Weiss, a good friend. Robert, welcome to the show. Hey, David. Thank you very much. It's an, it's an honor to be uh, on the show uh, because you've, like, developed yourself so much over the last couple of years that I've known you and you've grown this podcast and this medium. So congratulations. So happy thank to be you. Here. I appreciate that. Well, you, you were with me from the start. We'll say, we'll say you kind of did my first podcast, even though it was a video when I started, you know, thinking about doing this. Um, uh, I was doing video only at first and came down to New York City area. And uh, I interviewed Norm Brodsky. If anybody reads Inc. Magazine, they may have heard yep. of the Ask yep. Norm column. And, uh, and he's, you know, massive, successful entrepreneur. And so you and your, uh, your, your audio video production company, um, you know, filmed that for me and it was fantastic. And I still have that online. In fact, what I'll do is when I post this on social media, I'll put the link to that uh, underneath so they can see your work, but it was super fantastic. Yep. But that was about what, cool. three, four years ago. We've come a long way, baby, right? We both have. Yeah. So yep. again, that's why I reference it because when, uh, I knew I was going to be doing this. Like I, re I just reflected on our relationship and how we both have grown. And also of course, how you've grown throughout, you know, the last couple of years. So yeah, absolutely. Be yep. Well, and you, so you own a company called multi vision digital, correct? That's correct. And yep. so first of all, tell me how you got into that. How did your journey begin? Uh, and then tell us more about, you know, maybe the beginning of the company and how, how it's evolved since you started it. Uh, I'm going to try to shorten this because how I got into it, um, like I'm not a video guy, so I didn't know I was going to get into it. And uh, I left. Oh, so let me, let, me, let me interrupt you already. So you started a video company, a video production company, and you're not a video guy. Yeah, without I love any that. background, any experience in video at all, except like taking pictures and video of my kids. So like me, right. So, so yeah, basically. I basically. <laughs> So, so what made you think about starting a video production company, even though you never had done any, any, any videos? The writing was on the wall in terms of digital adoption. So I had been there back in the early days of the internet, um, 99, 2000, where people were just building their first websites and everything needed to be built. There was no WordPress. There was no software as a service. Everything needed to be built. Email marketing systems we all use now had to be built. So I worked at a small dev shop and um, that was my first kind of entree into the digital world. I was, a, I was a, basically a sales guy there and then got into software as a service before software as a service was even a term. Selling CRM, email marketing was a whole platform of email marketing, CRM, customer portals, opportunity management, some other things. Uh, with a website front end hook um, and then got into email marketing and that was my last job and then jumped ship to work uh, with a friend of mine who was developing a startup uh, a basically a, a lead generation system for wedding vendors for the wedding industry and then the 2008 2009 crash hit where we weren't going to get any money and i said hey you've he was a wedding. He was a wedding videographer. I said, do you know what's going to happen with video over the next 10 years? And he had a couple corporate videos he did on beta tape. So we got them transcribed, put them up online and just started hitting the phones. And that's how we got started in video. Um, a little bit after that, uh, we split ways. Uh, he was a great colleague because uh, I worked with him in the past at that software uh, Software as a service startup. He was a great worker bee, but not necessarily a great entrepreneur. And based upon my personal things that were happening at the time with the separation and divorce, I'm like, I don't want to be in a position where we're fighting and arguing when we have a lot to argue and fight about. So let's break up now mm -hmm. when we really don't have anything. And again, like for the last nine years, uh, I've been building a business. And uh, I guess I can say I'm a video guy now, <laughs> yeah, now <you laughs> even can, though right? I still don't hold it, hold a camera and, and do the editing. Uh, but we've done about 830 videos across every single 
type of business objective out there from the marketing funnel to top level funnel consideration, awareness, lead gen, lead conversion, to then sales support, product launch, product area, service area overviews, recruiting videos, like you name it, the gamut of video content we've, we've done. So, you know, we, we've, cause I know you, we've talked about your company and, in, in you know, you've described it yet. Yeah, yeah. Like what your, your final product is uh, tangibly is video, right? Um, but at, at the end of the day, you also, you also describe yourself as a marketing company, a digital marketing company, right? Well, that's actually what we are. Yeah. So we're not a video, we're not a video production company. So right. uh, we are a digital marketing company that provides uh, the right content at the right place at the right time for our clients that happens to be, and that content happens to be video. Right. So it turns, that's that, that ideally turns into prospective leads for companies. Yep. Yeah. Or it could be awareness. You know, it, it doesn't always necessarily have to be leads. It could be a branding yeah. campaign or, or a conversion campaign where it's driving awareness or clicks, which in some form is, is conversion. Um, but it doesn't always have to be that lead conversion or sales conversion. You know, it could be after the sales conversion in a B2B buying cycle. And, you know, think about the pieces of paper that people have now with, after the conversion, they've got brochures, they've got product slicks, they have case studies, white papers on PDF, digital, right? Or on a website. So what we're doing is helping companies to understand that one video is not a video marketing strategy and that video is the king of all content that people will consume. So why not create video that aligns with your traditional sales and marketing process, whether you're a B2B company or a B2C company. Makes sense to me. And, and you know, in, in video, people have been saying that videos, videos, the, the, the next biggest thing. Well, it, it's, it's here. It's the biggest thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Isn't YouTube, the, yeah, isn't YouTube the second, YouTube is the second uh, biggest search engine, second to Google, right? Which Google owns YouTube. So nice. That's uh, correct. Nice one, two yep. punch. And, right? and, and for those people that are on the B2B side, that's a great understanding of, of why video, because I get a lot of, why. Oh, well, we're business to business, right? And, and we're not, we don't want to be found on YouTube, right? So there's two things. Number one, our, our personal behavior is driving our business behavior, right? We never bought airline tickets online before, but we do it all the time now. Right. It goes without saying, right? We do that for business too. And there's hundreds of examples of, of that, but also, the perception of YouTube as a consumer-based um, platform, which is probably still true, but the application of a business is really just a hosting platform. Right? Right. Where else can you host a video and have that be ubiquitous across every single device out there that people trust and know, which is YouTube. So it's a hosting platform. So the, the, the discoverability of your B2B videos might not be the reason why you leverage YouTube, but to take those embed codes and put them on a product page and send a link to somebody that you've just spoken with after a conversation, a link to that page that has four or five YouTube videos on it. That's the application of YouTube from more of a B2B standpoint. Yeah. Very good, very good. So the, the business since you got into it nine years ago, uh, has, it, has it changed at all? And I'm being somewhat facetious. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, yes. Obviously the technology has gotten better. Um, we were shooting on um, like an SD when I first started and like HD like tapes. Now we're shooting in 6K sometimes, you know? So that, the capabilities of the technology, of course, our, um, capabilities has grown tremendously since you know nine years ago but what i think is most salient to somebody that might be listening or watching this is the is the thought the strategy behind video that's the big thing that's changed right producing video content is producing video content and that that's just a methodology methodology and a process for that but the sophistication of planning a strategy you know we talked about earlier, one video is not a video marketing strategy. More and more companies are understanding that 
they need to invest in video many times a year to get different types of video content to support awareness, to support a new product launch, to support recruiting, to support SEO, to support thought leadership, all these other things. And if you have multiple industries that you're going after and you're launching multiple products, that's a lot of video content. So that's, I think, the big change in my industry is that some companies and more companies are beginning to get that. And the cadence of somebody investing in video is really up to them. It's once a year, four times a year, six times a year, three times a year, right? Depending on your, the size of your company, your capabilities, your budget. But the thing is that you're thinking about that investment ongoing over the next couple of years. Interesting. So you, you have recently, um, you know, we use the overused term pivot, pivoted to a new product, which you are calling remote video capture. So tell me, tell me our, our, the Avanti okay. family about that product. So the remote video capture product is just that. It allows us to leverage um, smartphones, which are pretty good. And um, like if we were interviewing you, we would give you, a, you would download the app, we would give you a, a session ID and you would log in and you'd be able to see me as a director producer, like right on screen. And I'd be able to coach you and help you through getting the footage we would, we would need to then go professionally edit that video, just like we would do if we were standing in front of you. So the pre-production on deciding the, the business objectives in terms of what you're going to talk about, the, the bullet points, any supporting materials that might pop up on screen, charts and graphs, B-roll, like that's all there. And then we coach and direct you to make sure that you get the messaging across because a lot of business people are not good in front of the camera and they need that coaching and support. And then we professionally edit that. We can download the footage off the cloud and then edit that. Uh, we can even go two cameras. So if you had two smartphones, you could like, you know, have a two camera shoot just like we would in person. So because of the, you know, the, the, the current economy, we've had to switch to remote video capture. And that's really all that we're doing right now. Yeah. Wow. So that's, that's really becoming your main product at this point. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a challenge to kind of get it out there because marketing in any environment is tough. There's a lot of noise out there but even, even more so now. So um, a couple of weeks ago we shift and basically that's all we're talking about right now, all that we're writing about, all that we're blog posting about and the quality of, of these cameras, if you will, are pretty good. Um, even the back camera, sorry, the back camera on some phones can shoot up to 4k. Wow. So, yeah. you know, when you have two cameras side by side, you know, they really do the job. Now that doesn't mean that, they're a replacement for a video production crew to go out and shoot a corporate overview video or recruiting video. These are more for thought leadership types of pieces of content, things that you can do more talking head for a professional services firm, uh, an accounting firm, a law firm, um, any type of uh, software company that might want to talk about a new product release. So, so any type of like one-to-one -one communication, those are really great use cases for remote video capture. Excellent. So now, uh, now that we know about uh, who you are and what you do, uh, a lot of the Avanti listeners are, you know, beginning the middle stage entrepreneurs, right? And, and they want to learn from you, Robert, right? And you know, you've got a lot to teach them. And uh, so, you know, and, and part of learning is uh, just, the, you know, some of the challenges and struggles you've had, um, you know, along your entrepreneurial roller coaster, your journey. Uh, has there been any, you know, crashed and almost burned stories or any challenges that, that maybe seemed insurmountable, but, you know, you push through them and, and here you are today still in business nine years later? Yeah, I mean, I think right now um, the environment that we're in is probably one of the most challenging for most people listening right now and certainly for us, right? So for us to... Um, and you're right in New York City, right? Right in New York City, right in the heart of it. Actually, today I'm in my, uh, my country home in Pennsylvania. We got out of the city um, a couple of weeks back. But yes, yeah, I mean, my business is New York City, like on the island of Manhattan. 
Right. So yeah. um, the petri dish of so, uh, of coronavirus at this point. So yes, yeah. and globally. Yeah. So, you know, they, I think now is probably the most challenging time, but just like having a plan, like uh, when, when I was doing telesales back in that software as a service, um, the, the one thing that I'll give a shout out to Rich Jeremiah was my boss at the time, the VP of sales. He used to say, you got to shoot to get hot and shoot to stay hot. Right. So shooting is very different today than it was even two months ago. Right. Picking up the phone, making calls, having meetings like that was shooting. So I think for us, just activity breeds activity and you really just having, you know, we're, we're lucky that we made the investment in remote video capture prior to this. So we kind of like had it there and really now it's just like amplifying that. So, you know, we had that product there. Um, so to, to find something and just start getting it out there knowing that you're probably not going to make any money in the short term, but it's going to be okay in the long term. Like that's, I mean, that's the biggest challenge that, that we're going through. And that also does relate to, um, you know, the answer that I would have given you had we not been going through this challenge. It was probably about five or six years ago where I decided that I wanted to stop doing the smaller jobs. And I wanted to really kind of up the level to the larger jobs. And I turned jobs away. And it was, there, was a, there was a lull in, in revenue. And I was, you know, this is still kind of early going in, in multivision and didn't have a lot of money in the bank. And I saw it going down, down and down because I didn't have those big deals. And I had some opportunities. I lost some, didn't win a lot, you know. And I just, I just knew everything was going to be okay. I don't know why. And I remember this, this was like, you know, probably 2014, 2015 in September to October and boom, everything changed after that, that one client came in, which was a relationship for many years. And I had all of my other clients come in It just, and that really kind of got the ball rolling for this kind of the second phase of multi di multi vision digital. I think now we're, we're into the third phase, if you will. So very oh. similar mindsets um, and very similar circumstances. So. And, and doing uh, well enough to have a country home in Pennsylvania. Yes. And escape Thank and thankfully. escape from New York City. Grateful for that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, congratulations. <laughs> hey, last but not least, I, I always love to give our Avanti listeners some, some tips for success, right? Um, so, you know, knowing, you know, we're, we're friends and we, we've shared our ages with each other. And if I remember correctly, we're, we're around the same age. We'll say around yeah, pretty 50. Pretty much. Pretty much. Right? 50. I, 30, 38? Uh, are you 38? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm 28. <laughs> <laughs> going on 51, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so you, um, you look great, right? You look like you're in shape, you're healthy, you're thin, um, and, and you look happy, right? You don't look like, even though we're in this, uh, really weird, um, coronavirus time period, you know, you don't look like overly stressed. What are some of the things you do as an entrepreneur, as a, as a human, to um, you know, make sure that you're staying on top of your of your overall wellness. What are some of your habits for success? Well, one of the big things that I do uh, in a non-corona environment is play hockey all the time. Like you know, mm -hmm. like I'm a huge hockey fan. My kids play hockey. I play hockey. Watch hockey. So that's that's a huge passion of mine. Yeah. So um, and that's one hell of a good workout, right? It is. It's great. Well, it checks a lot of boxes too because I've been playing with the same guys for four or five years now. And, you know, we've become friends and, you know, mm -hmm. there's the, the networking part, there's a the friend part, there's the boy time, there's the athletic part. So that, that checks a lot of boxes. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, it's really um, getting out. I love, I love to hike and be outside. So like at least once every weekend since this happened, you know, we've been out um, and doing some yoga, keeping in shape that way. And just always trying to be active, you know, mm -hmm. do a little bit of running um rollerblading when it's not snowing or raining out to do that um and i think that's about it just and i think from a mindset standpoint i'm not a mindset guru but going with the flow mm -hmm. like just really I've, I've had a lot of um 
said over the last you know eight or nine years have a lot of stress with my divorce and starting my business at the same time and you know kids that are growing up that are now teenagers so that was a really stressful point and I got through that and handled that so now it's just like just go with the flow and like have some confidence in yourself that things are going to work out which I don't all the time <laughs> you know we all go through our, our our ups and downs but in the greater scheme of things you know just kind of go with the flow uh, and one of the things my dad always said is that there's going to be opportunity everywhere yeah. there's always opportunity if you don't get one or you go down a different path there's going to be opportunity somewhere there yeah. always is I love it. I was just talking to Jeffrey Gittimore, you know, Little Red Book is selling, King of Sales. Yep. And uh, we're talking about this time period. A lot of people are, are nervous, down, complaining. And, uh, and he said, you know, kind of what your father was saying, always opportunity. He said, you know, a lot of people are stepping in horse shit and uh, they're pissed, right? Uh, but he says, oh, well, there, if I'm stepping in horse shit, there, there must be a pony someplace, right? And so, you know, how could you turn that? How could you turn anything that looks and probably is um, you know, a situation worth complaining about to some extent, but what can you find the positive? How can you find the positive in that, in that situation? So yeah, and that, sometimes that goes into like, you know, shoot to get to hot, shoot to stay hot because you can pick up the phone and start talking to people and like nine out of 10 are going to yell at you. Yeah. Right now you're making a sales call or, you know, whatever that type of call is or email outreach. Right. But staying, staying, you know, I don't know if the word is positive. I'm not sure if that is the word, but mm -hmm. staying, having the mindset of that. Solution focus maybe, right? Solution focus, you know, that you're going to get through it. And, you know, there's a reason why you're calling if something of value and just to kind of like push the naysayers away. Yeah. Um, which, which is challenging. It's, it's challenging. I'm challenged with that as well. Within the last three weeks, I think I got on the phone mm -hmm. for three hours. You know, um, but I've got time booked for this week to get back on the phone because I know that there's people out there that I want to connect with and that should know about this remote video capture solution. So, yeah, very good. Well, I was very excited that during this time period, I'm able to capture you remotely in my own special way. And uh, really appreciate your time, Robert. We have wanted to do this for a while. Same thing. And, uh, and I've loved following your success over the years. I love talking to you. I always get great energy. You're, uh, you're a calming, you know, force of nature, right? And you're calm, cool, collect, but powerful. And, uh, you know, probably, you know, uh, I'll call you the, uh, the calm hat trick, right? So good guy <laughs> and doing very well. I appreciate your time. And Robert, if anybody um, wants to learn more about you uh, and get in touch with you, what are, the, what are the best ways to do that? Uh, multivisiondigital.com. That's right. our website. Um, my contact information is at the top of the page there. Uh, we've got the remote video capture in the services area and then uh, lots of other uh, good content um, on the website. Uh, there's a tips page there. So anybody that is, you know, that wants to know about video, there's a whole tips page there that answers some questions like what's the best kind of video to get started with? How much does a video cost? what's the average cost of the video and so forth. Like, you know, so um, anyway, the, there's resources there for them if they want to learn. Excellent. I appreciate that. Robert Weiss, Multi Vision Dave. Digital. Uh, really appreciate your time. And I, I, uh, I'm excited to watch you continue to succeed, uh, you know, during a pandemic and after. Thanks, man. Fist bump. All right, there we go. <laughs> I like it. For those of you on video, we're doing a fist bump. Thank you, Robert. And I want to also you, thank the Avanti family. I'm honored to have your time as well. We have this podcast and hundreds more on AvantiEntrepreneur.com. Have a great day and stay awesome.